How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over how we can use Pi Auto GUI to create some automated tasks on our computers and the first program we're going to be creating today is going to sort our files on our desktop. So it's going to grab them and it's going to drag them from any location into the folder that we choose which is going to be my audio files folder and it's going to grab all of the files that we've specified so in this example, they're all going to be audio files. And yeah, that's actually all we're going to be doing in this lesson. And as you can see, it's quite effective and quite simple. But the concepts you're going to learn in this lesson will be transferable to any program you want to create. So the very first thing you want to do as usual is go ahead and create a new empty project in PyCharm. And we want to go ahead and open up the terminal because we want to install Py Auto GUI and open CV Python. So you want to install these two packages and then close the terminal. Now the very first thing we're going to get out of the way is the snapshots because we need to be able to recognize our master folder and these files over here so that we can click on them and drag them. So go ahead and just take snapshots of these two. I'm going to take a snapshot of the audio files like this. And I'm also going to take a snapshot of this music playing symbol over here. And I will rename the audio file to target folder. Here I'll just type in music image. Then with that being done, we can go ahead and drag them inside our project. So go ahead and drag your snapshots into your main project file so that they are next to your main script. And then we can maximize this program once again and go to our main file. Now inside here, we're going to go ahead and import PyAuto GUI as PAG. And we do not need to import OpenCV to make this work. It's going to work under the hood. But the very first thing I want to show you is that we can provide a failsafe. And we're going to set this to true. And what failsafe does is that if your program is doing something, it's moving the mouse around at any point of the program, you can move your mouse to this top left hand corner and it's going to end the program. It's going to throw an error and end the program. So this is important in case your program starts opening links and logging into your Facebook and messaging your friends with unwanted messages. You might want to be able to step back from that. So it's going to give you a way to exit out of it. And there's another one you should be aware of and this is pag.pos and this is just a timer between each function call. So if you put one second, it's going to automate the mouse and then it's going to pause for one second until the next function call. So this just gives it a big delay in case it's doing something you don't want it to do. You can stop it ahead of time. We're not going to be using this in this example, but it's good to know that you have these options. Now let's go ahead and create a function that can get the position of any image. So here we'll call it def get position and it's going to take an image of type string. And here we're going to create a try and accept block because first we want to try and see if we can get the position. So it's going to be PAG dot locate center on screen. And we want to insert the image here. And we also want to give it a confidence of 80%. So if the image looks 80% as the one that we've provided, it's going to recognize it as the image we're looking for. Otherwise, it's not going to find anything. And this confidence parameter is only available if you have OpenCV installed. So that's why we installed it with pip. And this program actually works without this as well. It's just in general, if you don't have a pixel perfect image, it nearly never recognizes the image you give it. So confidence at 80% or 90% just makes your program a bit more fluent and helps with ignoring those very small imperfections. Now below that, we want to check if the position is none, then we're going to go ahead and print a formatted string that says that the image is not found on the screen. And we're going to return none. Else it means there is a position and we have found the image. So we're going to go ahead and grab those positions. So the X is going to be the position at the index of zero. And this is also another thing I need to clarify because I'm running this on a retina display on a MacBook and retina displays have about double the pixels. So you're going to get some really funky behavior. The positions are not going to look the same as on Windows. And for Mac users, if you do have a retina display, you need to divide all of these positions by two. But if you're on Windows, 
you don't have to do this unless you have a retina display. But this is just something that happens on Mac. And that's why I'm dividing by two over here. And I need to do the same thing for the position at the index of one, which is going to be the Y coordinate. And with that being done, we can return both X and Y. And we still need to take care of the accept block, which is going to be an OS error. And we're going to accept it as E so that we can just raise an exception, which is going to be E. And you can enter whatever kind of code you want in here. I just want to make sure that it stops the code if something's wrong. And in general, you're going to get this error if you insert an image name that it cannot find in your folder. So it's definitely a logic error. And if it can't find the image in your folder, then your program won't work no matter what you do. So it's good that it raises this error. But let's go ahead and test this out. So if we go ahead and create, let's say, a main check. So if name is equal to main, and we're going to get the position for one of the images that we've provided, and we'll just pick the target folder. So here we'll type in target folder dot PNG. And we can close this. Then I need to open my screen a bit so we can actually locate this over here. And the final modification I need to do is type in position here because we want to get the coordinates and print the position. So if we go ahead and run this, it's going to return these coordinates of where this folder is. And one thing you can do that's really cool right now is go ahead and type in PAG, move to, and we can just insert that position. And let's also give that a duration of 0 0.5. And if we run this program one more time, it's going to move your mouse pointer directly to the audio files. So, so far, so good. We've got everything working as we wanted to. So let's go ahead and close the terminal and open this window once again and just remove all of this because the next function we need to create is the drag to function. So def drag to target. And it's going to take an image of type string followed by a target of type string and a speed of type float. And the position is going to be equal to get position of the image that we will pass in. And the target will also be equal to get position of the target image. Now we want to check that both of these are not none. So if we go ahead and type in if none, not in position and target. So if none of these are none, then we can go ahead and continue with the program. So PAG dot move to, and we want to move it to the position with a duration of speed. And then we want to call PAG dot drag to the target position and the button has to be specified or this will not work. We're just going to use the left button with a duration of the speed. So as you noticed earlier, this performs a move to action and this performs a drag action. And if you go ahead and type in PAG, you'll notice that there's a lot of these actions you can perform such as click and double click and triple click and so on. There's a lot of these actions you can play around with. But here we need to go ahead and create an else statement, which will raise an exception. And if it returns none, we want the program to stop completely. So I'm just throwing an exception here that says could not complete the request because one of the images returned none. And this just means there's no more of the images that we're looking for on the screen. So that's how we're going to exit out of the program. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a main function just to throw in all of the code we have. And we're going to call drag to target. So now we need to fill out these fields. And if we open our project over here, you can see that the first one we need to fill out is the music underscore image dot PNG, followed by the target image, which is going to be the target underscore folder dot PNG. And the speed will be set to 0.5. So let's go ahead and test that this actually works. So let's go ahead and create our main check. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and just call main. Now go ahead and close this slightly because we need to test it out by grabbing one of these and putting it here. So if everything works perfectly, it's going to call this function, which is going to grab this over here and drag it over here. So let's go ahead and try it and click on run main. 
and perfect, it dragged it directly to the folder. And you might be wondering, so how do we do that with many files? And first we need to arrange the files in some random order. We'll just put it in a circle this time. And to actually make it work in a circle, all I did is go ahead and insert a while true loop, which I recommend you never do when it comes to using automated controls, because this can lead to something infinite that makes it really hard to control your mouse. And if it does something wrong, there's not much you can do to recover from it other than turning off your computer or hoping that you can go to this left hand corner and stop the program. But as you can see, all I did is include a while true here and it's going to continue looping through this until it raises an exception and the exception will be raised when it finds no more of these music files. But if we go ahead and run this program one more time, it's going to do its best to drag all of the folders or all the files to the folder. And as you can see, it's doing a wonderful job. And yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. We had a very simple introduction to how to use Pi Auto GUI and how to recognize images. So with that being said, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.